Good morning. How are you? So we're going to be talking about how AI will change the world of finance. And I thought we'd break the subject down into basically four areas. First, how it's going to affect back office operations of financial institutions. Two, how it'll affect customer-facing operations. What will the changes be for the customers? Third, what's the applicability or utility of AI when it comes to actually trading and making investment decisions? And then finally, what are some of the risks that AI presents in the financial world? And so to start out with the first subject, how it'll affect back office operations, let me ask first Antoine, what are your thoughts on that? So obviously we will see a lot of, uh, of work being done on KYC and AML. Um, but I'll give you an example. Uh, one, of, uh, one of the companies that I'm uh, very close to, uh, this large fintech company, um, they had 1,200 people in customer support. Uh, they started to implement Gen AI, uh, their own Gen AI based uh, customer support uh, system. And within three months, they got a more than a 50% increase in productivity. So the time it took to respond to a particular customer request came, went from seven minutes to less than three and a half minutes. So we'll pick up in speed in terms of responsiveness. Speed, and of course, you know, you, you're able to reduce your cost as well, mm -hmm. right? So you, it's better service at lesser cost. All right. Nick, any thoughts on this subject, how it will affect back office operations? Yeah, John, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to answer this question. So uh, blockchain.com, we have an AI working group, and it's basically uh, attacking every single function within the business to bring efficiencies, to help improve how we deliver our services to our customers. And uh, some of the most obvious use cases are in uh, back office for customer support. We also see it being used widely in how we personalize messages and marketing. We're using it in our risk and uh, analysis for onboarding and KYC and speeding up how we can get people from sign up all the way through to conversion uh, on the blockchain.com platform. So uh, any company that does not have an enthusiastic approach to adopting uh, AI today is going to be falling behind quickly. All right. I mean, one kind of obvious application, it seems to me, is uh, sort of compliance and fraud detection, money laundering and the like. If you're dealing with data, you can kind of catch aberrations. Uh, is that, have you seen that type of ad adaptation? Yeah, absolutely. And, and not just in the, the pure business of detecting fraud, but also, for example, uh, the business of insuring against fraud. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, there are companies that are building cybersecurity, uh, AI enabled cybersecurity insurance and reinsurance businesses. And uh, it's possible now with AI because you have to essentially predict the unknown unknown, mm -hmm. right? Uh, when you fight cybersecurity fraud, you're not fighting yesterday's battle. You're fighting tomorrow's battle. So how do you do that? You need mm -hmm. to have some amount of predictive power that is beyond the typical uh, amount of predictive pattern analysis that people used to do. I mean, I've heard also that it speeds up credit. I mean, automating and using AI to make credit assessments and credit decisions that it's act not only faster, but actually is a better predictor on credit risk. Have you had any experience with that? So in our case, we're using a lot of real-time on-chain analysis, so it's a little bit different than that, but one of the things we're able to do is study all the time, 24-7, 365, the quality of transactions that are happening on-chain, specifically the Bitcoin and Ethereum networks and many of the other ones. And this is helping us detect fraud, it's helping us detect uh, malicious activity and preventing bad actors from basically using our products and services. How about financial analysts? Are we going to... Are there going to be fewer financial analysts? Are we going to have generative AI, which is going to be you know, basically listening to investor calls, assembling information, you know, coming up with reports for investment committees? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it it's also goes beyond this. Um, so uh, I, I came across a, a company that uh, actually was able to scan um, the financial analysis reports um, and do that quarter after quarter. Mm -hmm. and detecting the differences in uh, trend uh, by a number of financial analysts and being able to deliver alpha mm -hmm. as a result. So, um, so to, to your question, yes, we'll have less financial analysts, maybe better ones, mm -hmm. <laughs> augmented mm -hmm. ones. Um, but also you'll, we'll have you know, new opportunities to use these brains to do other things. I mean, how soon do you think we'll see the impact on the, on the workforce? I mean, the labor market is very tight right now. How soon do you think we're going to see actually this affect employment in the finance industry? 
Uh, I think it's already affecting it, um, but to the point of whether or not you, know, you can use these tools today, uh, we're using them to screen uh, these types of articles and basically summarizing that content, then doing trend analysis over a duration of time and feeding that into a news feed that we deliver to our customers on a day-to-day -day basis. And so uh, I don't know if it'll cause necessarily mass layoffs right away, but companies that aren't using this are going to see productivity decreases. And so really, you may need to empower your workforce to learn how to use these tools, encourage them. Uh, to practice using them and get good at prompting them. And that's sort of where we are today. But longer term, uh, AI and the future of financial services are going to be highly correlated. It's not a coincidence that technologies like blockchain and AI are emerging simultaneously. They are highly symbiotic. You need to have a lot of informatics and you need to have a lot of ability to understand what those informatics are revealing to us to develop trends and sentiment and then improve your products and services to deliver better things to your customers. So when you talk about better, cheaper, faster, this is all those things in combination coming together right now. How will the, the customer perceive the difference? How is the world going to be different for the customer as a result of the use of AI in the finance world? So you, know, you talked about uh, credit history, right, and the lack of credit history that very often means that the unbanked or the lesser banked people, in, especially in the developing world, are having trouble accessing um, a financial products. I think AI will solve that, because uh, AI is able to look at data that is typically exogenous to traditional uh, credit history, credit analysis, and being able to form a pattern or develop a pattern for a particular user and, and give the financial institution the ability to bank that person, right, finally. So we'll see that. The second thing we'll see is what was historically available to high net worth individual, complex products, will be able to be offered to uh, the mainstream customer. And, and the reason why we'll be able to do this is because effectively you'll have your personalized financial advisor on your phone. That's starting to happen. Um, and uh, as this happens, you know, eventually we'll see the democratization of complex finance, which is great. I agree with Antoine. Uh, I was talking to a CFO yesterday here at FII, and uh, it's always been a privilege to have that type of function in a major business. But within a few years, every household in the world will be able to have a CFO for their financial needs, for their planning, for paying their bills, for finding their best uh, vendors to work with, to help them shop, and much more. And so I'm excited about the efficiency gains for those things. But also, if we have better tools to help families manage their income and their wealth creation, uh, this will raise the standard of living for anyone who's engaging with these types of tools. Yeah. And on the democratization side, being able to pull a lot more information about a potential customer that's not just where they came from, what job they have, what university they went to, and whether or not they have the right income, but may or more of their behavioral information, you're able to build a more comprehensive risk score for a potential customer. And to me, that provides an amazing opportunity to increase the market that uh, financial service firms are able to, to serve. How about the use of AI in actually making investment decisions and trading decisions and picking stocks? I've heard that there's some kind of, there's a bit of a controversy in that area because the markets, at least the public markets, are maybe too noisy, so the signal to noise ratio is too high, it's uh, too much subject to exogenous events like pandemics and, you know, wars and things that cannot be predicted by AI or anyone else. Any thoughts on that? So, uh, you know, I, I actually built a, a, an AI-enabled hedge fund years ago. And at the time, what you could do, right, was uh, you could work on pattern detection and you could work on optimization. So you could find complex patterns in markets and, and trade those, or you could try to optimize the best entry point uh, and find your best exit point. But it was very hard to understand the world. You could not make sense of the world. What's different now with especially generative AI is that we're beginning to approximate human cognition. Mm -hmm. So machines are being are able to progressively, it's a bit controversial still, but we believe, the industry believes, that through understanding language, you're beginning to build some cognitive model of the world. Right? And if you be begin to build cognitive models of the world, eventually you're, begin you're beginning to be able to trade or to, to make uh, more semantic, semantically based decisions. And so, uh, where, whereas I think historically the scope of this was very narrow, you're going to begin to see going forward 
uh, companies that are trying to build end-to-end -end AI enabled uh, trading strategies. I think we're not there yet. It's a very complex problem. And I think there'll be a lot of failures before there is success. But uh, I think it's the realm of possibility now. Nick, any thoughts on that? The use of AI in making investment decisions in trading. I tend to agree with Antoine's perspective on the long term. I think in the near term, uh, there are going to be some very big challenges. Um, AIs are particularly good at summarizing information today. You can use them to co-author uh, literature, um, but they're not very good at uh, dealing with current affairs and world events. If you were to ask it about geopolitics today, it would give you some fairly shocking answers to questions that are evolving in real time. Uh, there's a lot of work to do ahead of us uh, to improve these models because right now we're sort of being, I would say, impressed by their fluency. But unless you look at it carefully, uh, you may be confused about what the reality is. And so they are not yet effective at understanding the world. However, as we improve these models, uh, I have a lot of confidence that they will be effective. Um, and longer term, uh, the merging of these things is quite inevitable, but uh, it is important to understand where we are today. Um, there's still and, a lot of work to do. Yeah, and I want to add something. So machines, we, we want to use machines, why? Because they're technically fast. I mean, the clock speed is faster than that of the human brain. Um, but but in, in investing, there's a big difference between trading and investing. If you trade and your trading time horizon is a minute or a second or a few hours, then you can use the speed of the machine to learn fast. That feedback loop is uh, very leverageable by the machine. But if you trade uh, over quarters and years and you are a P investor or you do big macro type investment, machines, you cannot um, uh, leverage that speed of the machine, right? So you've got to use a, use a good old human brain. Mm -hmm. well, let's talk about some of the risks to the financial world from AI. I mean, if we have greater concentrations of data, big tech companies, some people talk about a risk of sort of a herding phenomenon, which will create more and more volatility in the markets as big players detect the same phenomena and make the same moves at the same time. Does that sound like a, a plausible risk to you? Uh, yeah, I do think that's a possible risk. I mean, you've got a debate going on right now, which has been raging for decades, but it's extremely relevant to the AI conversation, which is how do you train these systems? Do you use open source information or do you use a proprietary data set? And what are the consequences of those things? So, for example, you could train a trading algorithm based on sentiment on Twitter, but would that be an appropriate way to do that? Or would you use a proprietary data set that only you have access to based on your customer's decision making? the outcomes you would have uh, for trading strategies based on a proprietary set of data versus an open set of data are vastly different. And uh, there's going to need to be, uh, I would say, a lot of battle testing of these types of things in the market. But my broader perspective long term is that uh, wider open sets will most likely prevail, but this will come in conflict with the large tech platforms. And uh, Google, Facebook, uh, Apple and others are going to build walled gardens around their information, most likely, unless they've made public pledges and there's still some controversy about how much of their data they're really sharing. And so uh, the battleground is sort of forming today around these uh, training models. And I think one of the things that's going to be particularly tricky is how do you compensate the data sets? And I'm actually quite excited about the merging of crypto assets and informatics because we can now create an entire information uh, asset class where you actually reward these types of training models for good information and input. And if you have lousy input, you'll have lousy output. And so uh, finding a way to compensate the actual data uh, providers and the reconciliation of that data is going to be extremely important. Well, we're just about out of time, but let me ask your reaction to a statement made by Gary Gensler the chairman of the U.S. Securities Exchange Commission, he said that it is nearly unavoidable that there will be a financial crisis caused by AI in the next 10 years. And to, to this I would say, uh, probably, but I, I would retort that uh, over the last many decades, the primary cause of financial crisis has been HI, our very own human intelligence. So. I think this is where we should focus first, All right. still. I think we're out of time. Thank you very Good much. Dad. Cheers. All right. Thank you.